Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shot, the Australian Open Final 2022, Ash Barty versus Daniel Collins, the WTA final. Of course, Barty is looking to make history when they go over what it means if she wins, what it would mean for Daniel Collins making her first Grand Slam final appearance as well for the 13, 31 year old from America. She's long since lived in the shadow of some of the great Serena Williams, Venus Williams, of course coming through now some of the americans are coming through into their own uh, even towards the latter end of their career so it's a very interesting tie the hard hitting american versus the versatile one in most people's eyes the best women's tennis player on the planet we're going to break that down ash barty what i'm going to do first actually is i'm not going to go over um how on the route to the final yet we're going to go over that in a second what i want to first highlight is what it would mean for her it's her third major final obviously winning at roland garros and also wimbledon as well last year so she's two out of two for finals not bad eh? she's won 11 titles in the past three years not bad as well and she has dispatched every single opponent so far in this Australian Open 2022 in straight sets. And not just that, she, she's managed to stay on court for only just over six hours. Unbelievable. In addition to that, in addition to that, she's dropped only 21 games in her six rounds, right? Not bad, eh? Not bad. The third most efficient run to a final after Steffi Graf in 1989, who only conceded 16, and Monica Seles in 1993, who conceded 20. She's lost just one service game during the fortnight after saving 13 out of 14 cumulative break points. And she's become the first Australian to reach the final of this tournament since 1980. And will try to become the first champion since the golden era from Australia to win Australian Open since 1973. On top of that, she'll also be to become the second only active woman currently to win majors on all three surfaces after Serena. Not bad, eh? Not bad. So a lot on the line for Ash Barty, a lot of records to break, a lot of interesting facts as well uh, to look at with her going into this. I mean, she has been the standout player of the tournament. Now, if we talk about Danielle Collins, and then I'm going to go into the route to the finals, uh, also the styles of play for each player, how I think it's going to go about, uh, potential tactics that may be pivotal to the outcome of the match, and then my actual overriding prediction for the match. Danielle Collins has been, for me anyway in this tournament, a bit of an eye-opener. I know she's made... Grand Slam semi-finals previously, but to make a final this year has been extremely impressive. Uh, for me, there's been a lot about her and her game anyway uh, that has been fantastic to see. She blew away Iga uh, Sviantek, um in such devastating fashion. 6-4, six, 6-1, six, uh, reaching her maiden Grand Slam final, hitting double the amount of winners to unforced errors. She now owns seven career top 10 victories, uh, six coming in Australia and three in Melbourne alone. Interestingly, actually as well, and it's worth pointing out, Ash Barty's run has been phenomenal as we pointed out a, a minute ago, but she'd actually only faced, and she has only faced two seeded players and no one inside the top 20, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, which is a very interesting stat. And the reason why I say that is because she's obviously, it's opened up a lot. She was actually meant to face, Ash, uh, sorry, Naomi Osaka in the fourth round. Obviously, Anissimova knocked her out, saving match points, going on to win, etc. Very impressive. Then Ash Barty beat her in the next round. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Radicanu was in that side of the draw as well. Uh, there's a few others, of course. Uh, just, you know, we can say and safely say that that some of the players that may have given her slightly more trouble were out, but either way, you can only play who's in front of you. For Danielle Collins, I mean, she loves these fast conditions, and who can blame her? She hits so big off both wings. 
forehand and backhand. The surface is so suited to her game and style of play. And when the roof closes, even more so. Bounces lower. She doesn't hit with huge topspin. Um, she hits hard through the court, though. Stays lower. It's cooler. Perfect conditions. You have to hit a heavier ball, and she is the type of person who can do that. It's very interesting, right? Because she won her first Grand Slam matches in 2019. She's been a late, but she's turned pro quite late as well. She turned pro late. Three years ago, she defeated Angelique Kerber, Julia Georges, and Pavla Chenkova to reach semifinals. She lost to Petra Kvitova in the end. Now she's gone obviously one step further. And this is interesting because she's gone one step further to ensure her very own top 10 debut and become the highest ranked US player. So after this tournament, she will be the highest ranked American player. She's ranked number 30 at the moment. She will be in the top 10 after this tournament. What a story, to be fair. This is so interesting. Um, I mean, she's only 28. So I thought she was 31, but she's 28. And she's just had a really, really interesting, very interesting uh, career so far. The Head to Heads 3 1, Barty leading it, uh, won their first three clashes. Um, Yeah, which is interesting. Uh, but since then, last year, 2021, Collins won 6 3 6 4. They've got such different, I mean, styles. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I mean, let's talk about it now. Barty, of course, deadly slice. We know that on the backhand side, slice on the forehand sometimes as well. She can change up the pace, but she also has hit. Huge forehands, different variations, beautiful forehand cross court, one of the best on tour, if not in tennis. The forehand cross court is so good. Um, the angle she finds on it, whipping it is just incredible. Not losing much velocity as well. Big top spin, kicks off the surface. Uh, she's she's got an all round game for any surface. The backhand, the drive backhand is far, is a weapon. The slice backhand is is incredible. Uh, really good at the net as well good composure her serving is phenomenal not just because she's someone that height but the fact that she serves so well into corners so so impressive uh, on top of that there's just so much to like about her game it's very hard to find a notable weakness in the Barty armory and that is a testament to how solid a player she is I mean, it's just so difficult to find a specific. Mentally, you can be beaten on a day or turn up and not be on form. But if I look at it from the specific point of view of her actual game, I can't see anything, to be fair. She is a very, very good player, uh, is Ash Barty. And she goes into this a huge favourite, no doubt. It's her first Australian Open final, as is it. Danielle Collins, but she's been at this type of stage before at a Grand Slam final. She's won two out of two. She goes into this a huge favourite. For Collins, though, it's a case of going for broke. She's the type of person who likes to hit big. She's going to have to do a similar thing to what she did against uh, Sviantec, which is absolutely going ballistic almost on the back of the court, but with a control that means she's not just completely you know being off the hook and I know going wild with uh shots going left right and center wide long you know into the net picking her moments but picking them at a regular in, at regular intervals at the right time to step in and she will have opportunities to do that the big question will be how does Barty defend that and defensively she's very good Barty she slices and dices when she needs to and she gets herself back into the rally. So that is going to be the most interesting dynamic for me. Of course, the serve return is always interesting. We know that. But from the serve return mechanics, I think that Connors has been serving quite well. I thought she served really well against uh, Sviantec. But she's prone to a double fault. She's prone to getting her second serve attacked. Barty is someone who, uh, from what I've seen, is a very good returner. 
And I feel that the server return dynamics, Barty should come out on top. In addition to that, from the back of the court, yes, Daniel Collins is very aggressive. Yes, she hits fantastic winners, but so does Barty. And not only does Barty do that, but she has more variation. And defensively, she is way more sound. I mean, Daniel Collins, when she was on the back foot, very rarely was she on the back foot against Sviante, but when she was, she was really on the back foot. And Barty, sorry, and Sviantec ended up winning those points. Defensively, she's not the best. Uh, her best foot forward is her aggression and keeping that up for a sustained period of time. Can she do it over two sets? Well, she did it against Sviantec. Barty will have to weather the storm if Collins comes in like that, comes out literally swinging. It's going to be a fantastic matchup, I think, either way. Uh, I'm going to go, though, with a Barty straight set win. I think she's going to get it done. I think she's going to be really clinical as well. And um, that's kind of where I'm at with my prediction. In terms of the routes, we can go through that now. Uh, so Barty, in her first round, played Serenko, straight sets, Bronzetti, Georgi, Anna Samova, Pagula, Keys, all of them destroyed in straight sets. For Collins, she had uh, a harder route. I think, yeah, I, I think it's safe to say a harder route. Uh, Dolly Hyde beat her, Konju in straights as well, Torsen in three, Mertens in three, Cornet in straights, and uh, Sviontek in straights as well, which I thought was a really impressive performance. We're, we're going to see uh, how this one all plays out, but very, very interesting to just, I think, just to observe, really, uh, how these two go about it. But for me, Barty in straight sets. Let me know what your predictions are. Who do you think is going to win and why? Let me know how you think the match is going to go. And stay tuned for the live stream we will be doing tomorrow for the live watch-along and commentary for this. Thank you very much. Stay safe and well, and I'll see you on the next video.